Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Hello, everybody. Dr. F. Scott Feel here with another Teach Me Something Tuesday episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Today is number two of four in a four-part series on becoming a master adaptive learner. The second part of becoming a master adaptive learner is actually learning, right? It's doing the thing we're setting out to do. This becomes important because essentially learning is really engaging in the difficult process of meaningful learning. It's not passive. It has to be active. This includes things like critical appraisal of learning resources. We've got to make sure where we're learning this information from and how we're learning it are indeed good resources as opposed to uh, read it on the internet or on a Facebook group. That's not going to help us. Uh, we need vetted sources that we know are put together by experts and authorities in the topic that we're trying to learn. This way, it really ensures that the time spent engaging in learning is appropriately focused, right? We don't want to waste our time, you know, chasing our tails, running around in circles, looking at poor information, conflicting information, uh, and, and just garbage information at the very least, right? We, we, we don't want to use terrible resources that aren't going to help us any. Learning is really done best and done well when it, it has that, that connection, right? When it's, when it's really an effort. It's said that, you know, learning is, is deeper and more durable when it has that effort behind it, right? So it's like you get out of it what you put into it. You've got to have some skin in the game when you're trying to learn. And it, it has to be something that, A, you're curious about, interested in, or need to learn, right? And then you've got to do the work and the effort to learn. You must use active learning strategies, not rote memorization, reading, rereading, highlighting. I made that mistake. I've said it numerous times on this podcast that I was not a good learner until I really went through an educational doctorate program, which is insane. How do you get that far in life not knowing how to truly learn? Um, but I just, I found ways I compensated and, and most of my techniques were reading, then rereading, then highlighting, uh, and trying to memorize things when in reality, that wasn't really good learning. And I think a lot of it is a byproduct of trying to just get the grade. Uh, I was doing everything I can to memorize what I could to find a way to get the passing grade and then move on to the next thing and get the grades I needed to keep moving on. And then when I finally got to the point of an educational doctorate, I realized, oh, this is how you actively learn. It's putting together connections, meaningful connections, looking at bigger pictures, right? Zooming out and, and seeing how these things all affect each other and interact with each other in difficult environments. So it really has to be active learning strategies when you sit down to actually start your learning process. Because at the end of the day, if you do the rote memorization and the reading and the rereading and the highlighting that I used to do, it just doesn't help when it comes to understanding something and retaining the information. So to learn effectively, you really have to master the scientific principles of learning. Uh, and that's really what I got from my educational doctorate and the coursework that I did with that. It was super engaging, super helpful. It's really a little bit of a fire in me to learn more about the learning process, right? Educational research. 
you know, how we learn best, why we learn the way we learn, and then how to go around and teach towards that learning. So that's been super helpful for me, realizing I had to completely change how I went about learning. And now that I know that, I'm, I'm learning much, much better, much more deeply. Um, and it's really sparked more curiosity in me, too, to go out and learn more because I get it now. I know the process. I know how to, how to follow it. And I know how to seek out the things that I need in order to get the desired outcome of learning. So I hope that was helpful and we will see you on the next one. Well, I hope that episode was entertaining as much as it was informational and educational. If you enjoyed this episode or any of our past episodes, we ask you to please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. And please share out the episodes to those who you feel may be able to benefit from them. We also urge you to follow us on all social media platforms at HET Podcast. And let us know what topics or experts you would like to hear from in future episodes. And just as a reminder, none of the information on today's show should be considered medical advice. It's simply infotainment or edutainment to help educate our audience. For medical advice, we always advise you to reach out to your preferred medical professionals, and we'll see you on the next show.